Gladiators. They are champions. They're hustlers and Hall of Famers. They're the world's greatest pool players. And they've come to the International Pool Tour's King of the Hill 8-Ball Shootout for two very good reasons. To win the biggest prize money the sport has ever known. And to dethrone the current king of pool, Mike the Mouth Seagull. Meet Mike Seagull, voted the world's greatest living pool player. Taught Tom Cruise how to shoot pool in the color of money. Ten-time world champion. Today, he wears the crown. But nothing can prepare this legend for what awaits. Drama, excitement, and the most challenging pool competition ever. Take your cue. The world's most amazing players. The hottest pool action ever. A million dollars on the table. Get ready for the ultimate break. Uh, let's get ready to rock on! It's the International Pool Tour. It's good to be king. Champions, hustlers, and yes, Hall of Famers, they're all here at the International Pool Tour's King of the Hill 8-Ball Shootout. Without question, the richest, biggest, and most dramatic event in pool history. I'm Matt Vaskersian, along with the IPT's current king, 10-time world champ Mike the Mouth Siegel, and IPT founder Kevin Trudeau. We've made it to round three. Six players have survived the first two rounds and will now face their greatest challenge yet. They'll have to go up against the gods of pool, the myths and legends of the game, 12 Hall of Famers, who in some cases have come out of retirement to try to claim the big money and also to beat Mike Siegel. And Mike, you know a lot of these Hall of Famers. Oh, yes, now, yeah. who should we look out for here? Well, they're all masters of the game. You know, you have Nick Varner, Ephraim Reyes, uh, Laurie John Jones, my nemesis, Buddy Hall. Any of them can do serious damage. But I still think I'm the best player ever, so we're going to see what happens. Of course. So here we go. The Hall of Fame round, the International Pool Tour. What a day for eight ball. For the richest prize money the sport's ever known. But first, let's take a look at some of the International Pool Tour players that we'll be watching. Mike Massey, a Hall of Famer. He was voted the best trick shot artist in the history of the game. Lori John Jones, winner of over 50 titles, a five-time player of the year and a Hall of Famer. Cool hand Nick Varner, Hall of Famer, one of pool's all-time masters. Efren the Magician Reyes, a legend in the Philippines, one of the most lethal weapons in the history of pool. Here are the international pool tour rules. The game is eight ball. Traditional tough tournament conditions apply. The pockets are four and a half tight inches. The table has a slow nap cloth. You must call ball and pocket, no slop. You must break from the box, no breaking from the side rail allowed. The winner continues the break. The matches are a race to eight. The first player to win eight games wins the match. Here's how the IPT round robin format works. Round one, featured the 30 greatest and most feared pool players in the world. The top 15 players advanced to round two. These 15 players competed head on in three groups of five players each. The top two players from each group emerged victorious and now have moved on to round three. These six players are placed into three groups and have to face their greatest challenge yet. They must play the legendary Hall of Famers. The top two players from each group will move on to face each other in round four. The winner of round four will then face a date with destiny and will challenge 10-time world champion and pool legend, Mike the Mouth Seagull. Huge match to start our coverage of the round. The Netherlands' Nick Vandenberg, who won three of his four matches in round two, is already 1-0 in the Hall of Fame round after beating machine gun Lou Butera. Nick Varner of Owensboro, Kentucky, is considered by many to be the best player ever. A Hall of Famer, cool hand Nick is an eight-time world champ, five-time player of the year, and has won over 80 pro championships. He can play pool, no doubt about it. So the young guard Vandenberg and the middle-aged guard Nick Varner are about to start game 14 of this key match. Varner trails 7-6 to six in the race to eight. He's already lost to Marlon Manalo in this Hall of Fame round, so he can ill afford another loss here. Of course, Marlon has beaten everybody he's played, so Varner can take little solace in that. Vandenberg with break. Well, he's got to win the next two games here. What do you think about this break, Mike? 
He's got a great break. I mean, I see a lot of these young players. Look how the balls have opened. Now, this is interesting because the Hall of Famers, who haven't played the last two days, they're fresh. There's Nick Varner. He's a good friend of yours. Yes, very good friend of mine. Nick's a great player. And uh, now Vandenberg, you see the cue ball's on the rail to start with. He made a ball on the break. And he's got some problems here. I believe the stripe balls are a little tied up. I think he's elect to shoot a solid. This is a pretty tough shot right here. Actually, Nick Vandenberg, who's shooting, is up in the... Oh. I said that was a very was tough, a tough shot. shot. Is up in the match seven games to six. So Nick Varner, who now comes to the table, has to win the next two games to win the match. At least he has the opportunity to win this game. And if he does, he'll have the breaks. So that's a big advantage. I mean, that, 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 that was a big, big shot for Vandenberg. And Nick, I probably know Nick's game as well as my own. I mean, I've, you know, I've stayed with Nick. We room together. We're very good friends. Of course, on the table, we're enemies. But Nick knows how to play. He's a great player. Knows the patterns. This is going to be an interesting round because now the Hall of Famers get to come up and show their stuff. Now, Nick has not been in retirement. Nick's been actively playing. Yes. But he also had a heart condition a couple years ago and put yes. him out of commission for a while, didn't Yes, he? and he's doing a lot better now. So, uh you know, he's kind of on the comeback trail. He makes a great shot there. And you see how tough that shot was? That was a tough shot. And he's a great pressure player. He's got a little thing with his cue. I mean, I hope he doesn't get offended I say this, but if you watch the back of his cue, it shakes. I mean, it's not like I've a, watched him play yeah. when you and I were in New York at the straight pool championship. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll destroy this guy. <laughs> look, look at the, I didn't know who he was. Look at the shake in his arm. But he, he's had that ever since I played him, you know, and I've known him for many, many years. So obviously it doesn't affect his shot shot making ability. Now he really does not have well, he wanted to draw that back a little more, I believe. Nick is one of these guys that really analyzes each shot and knows where he wants to go to make it look simple. In terms of not just making the ball, but where he wants the cue ball to go. Yes. Now look at how low, low he's hitting that cue ball. Now see he's drawing over. He wants to play the blue ball next. The orange ball is going to be the last shot, so he's in good shape here. I think he's in good shape. Cool hand Nick. He might be playing the five. And that's exactly what he's doing. See, he positioned the cue ball where he could have played the two or the five. Again, going back to always try and put the cue ball in a spot where if you do get a little funny on a ball you're playing for, you have an out. Again, Nick Varner began this game trailing 7-6 to six in the match. He needs a win here. He needs to hold his break. This and will tie it up. This can tie it at 7 apiece. Nick Varner fights his way to go hill to hill with Nick Vandenberg. When we return to the International Pool Tour, the Hall of Fame round, Varner and Vandenberg play a huge deciding game. They're playing in the IPT, which means they're playing real pool with real rules for real money. Nick Varner, Owensboro, Kentucky. And I've been playing uh, pool for 52 years. I was national collegiate champion, won a couple world titles in straight pool. In fact, I won world titles in five different disciplines of the game. I really didn't get into the really the hustling. It was more like the gunfighter. I walked in and I just prayed somebody get up to play. <laughs> Nick Varner, class act, Hall of Famer, but on the verge of some serious trouble here if he loses to the man nicknamed El Nino, Nick Vandenberg. Guys, by the way, how did a pool player from the Netherlands get the Spanish nickname? I have no idea. Yeah, Do you know? A, I have no clue either, but the rains are obviously coming. Okay, it's 7-7 in the race to eight. A pressure-filled match. Varner won the last game and has the break. Look at that break. Look at the cue ball. Dead stopped, never moved. Now, Nick got a little unlucky. He hit him about as good as you can hit him and did not make a ball, and the table is spread out. I mean, a lot of this is luck also, when, especially when it gets down to one or two game difference. The runout, stripe and solid, looks good. I think the solids lay a little better. 
but the table's open and he's got a good opportunity to win this match. Whoever wins this game wins the match. His biggest problem is going to be the balls by the side pocket, and I believe he's going to try and take care of that again immediately. By the way, for all the people watching, to get the entire IPT tournament schedule and learn how you can also play in our open tournaments, which are open to any man or woman of any age in any country anywhere in the world, just go to www.internationalpooltour.com. You'll also get information on not only all the tournament schedules and how to play in the opens or be a spectator, but also the television schedules and the International Pool Tour licensed equipment like the, the balls we're using, the tables, the chalk, the rack, and the cloth. How's he doing here? How's He's doing great. He made a key shot by the side pocket, as I said earlier, about how the balls, that was the funny situation. Nick is looking up at the score. He's sick, but I'll tell you what, the only chance he has is that Vandenberg maybe makes a mistake on this shot. So many. Whoa. Ooh, and wow. he did. Wow. And there he goes. He did make it. Look, and he almost hit the cue on the table. He made a big mistake Now, there. you had just mentioned Nick Varner, who's in this chair, right. never bumped another ball. Now, see what he did there? He didn't intentionally want to do that, and because he did that, he really has no shot. He's got maybe the seven in the side. So Nick Varner is sitting in the chair right now thinking he may get to the table. Yes, exactly right. Ex this Vandenberg knows he may. <laughs> what he didn't do was cut the... Uh, five ball enough, which in turn hit the six. That could have cost him the match. Very, very likely. I mean, to be honest with you, if I was Nick Varner, I'd be a happy guy right now because Nick Varner from this position is a big favorite. What is he eight. doing here? Well, he try a combination. What he's going to do is line up the seven ball into the six. Now, no, for he, those at home, watch what he's doing because he's, he's, he's aiming that ball as if it was the cue. So now he knows where to hit the cue ball. Or where to put the cue ball on that ball, right? Yes, but he's also an underdog to make this. And he may not get a shot on the seven, even if he makes this. He's in big trouble. Big trouble. I would be surprised he wins this game. Again, there's no shot clock here at the IPT, so they can take as much time as they want, just like a professional pool pl uh, 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 player in golf. Yeah, see, and that was it. very tough. Now, he's opened the door for Nick Varner. Nick Varner's got to be just loving this. Look at this. That was very tough. Well, again, we're going back to the experienced player against the guys that are the nine ball young guns. And I, we've said this over and over again, that those mistakes will creep up on you and usually at the worst point in the match, 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, Nick Vandenberg is wearing it on his face now. He's just allowed a Hall of Famer to get right back in the match and maybe finish him off if he can run this rack. And a guy with Nick Varner's experience under pressure, Mike, you don't see him having a problem here, do you? Well, I'm not going to say anything. I mean, realistically, Nick Varner is, oh. a, is a tremendous. Look, look, at, look at that face. He's just deflated. I mean, lightning would have to strike for Nick Varner not to, to really take advantage of this opportunity. The only ball that's laying tough is the ball right to the right of him. That ball on the rail, that's the only ball. Now, now he I didn't that like ball. what he did there. Now, he made, I can't believe he did that. And he can't believe it either. That was very uncharacteristic. Even though this shot is not so tough, it works on your mind because he knows that he wasn't supposed to hit that ball. He makes a great shot, though. Nerves are also coming into play, don't forget. Sure, there's huge money on yeah. the line. <laughs> don't worry about it. The stick gets very heavy. He makes a great That's shot there. That's a great there. shot. And gets perfect on this ball we were talking about on the which rail. Was the, which is the treble ball you had yes, mentioned. Yes, those are, you know, this is, this is probably the only chance the other Nick has to get to the table. He makes it, though. You know, and gets position. In yeah. the future, when there's an IPT uh, tournament that's, that's based on college conferences uh nick varner will be leading the way for the big 10 yes. the former purdue boilermaker who is maybe a more accomplished purdue athlete than uh, joe barry carroll and billy dickin is uh is rolling here the hall of famer had his opportunity and he's cashing in so many of these games guys yeah. have gone to seven seven yes you're gonna see a lot of that a lot of pressure great shot now Nick's smiling. Oh, no, this is for the uh, for the game and the match.
Mick Varner with a stirring victory, proving the Hall of Famers have come to play here at the International Pool Tour. Next up, Hall of Famer Lori John Jones faces the Terminator thus far in this tournament, Marlon Manalo. A million dollars on the table, the king awaits his challenger. Back at the International Pool Tour, round three, the Hall of Fame round. Next up in this ultimate eight ball competition, it's Lori John Jones, eight time world champion. She'll play Marlon Manalo, an unappetizing prospect for anybody. Manalo is undefeated thus far in this tournament, having already won twice in this round. Lori John is one and one on the day. She beat fellow Hall of Famer Dallas West eight to three and lost to Machine Gun Lou Butera eight to four. Our match coverage takes us here to Manalo leading seven to two. So Lori John having as much trouble with the Filipino as everyone else has had thus far. And it is Manalo who has the break here. Now, Mike, you're seeing this guy play for the first time yes. in this tournament, right? Which is really surprising me how, how well this guy plays. You know, I know Ephraim and uh, some of the Filipino players, but as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the best Filipino players I've ever seen. Watch how hard he hits these balls. That's... Oh, almost crashed. Almost. He almost leaves his feet on the brake. Yeah, that's just unbelievable. It's all power. It's like a golf shot. You don't hit with your hands. You hit with your body. Oh, that's like a 350-yard drive. Yes, yes. And believe me, day in and day out, that will work on you. I mean, it's just so tough to beat well, a guy. Well, the balls are all wide open. They're all yes. spread out all over the table, which makes it easier. He, and he pockets a ball or two, so he has the next shot. Yes, but the balls are a little funny. You have two balls on the side rail. See on the on the top there, the two and whatever the other ball is? Safety. Actually, he's playing a safety, which is a smart move. Again, we had talked about, you know, if you can't run out, you have to play a safe almost immediately because you don't want to make two, three, or four of your balls and then make a mistake and leave your opponent an easy run out. This eight ball, you're going to see it go to another level because everyone watching television will start learning little bits and pieces and improving their games. Now, Mike, you, you know Lori John quite well. In fact, you played her at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas for the International Pool Tour yes. World 8 Ball Championship. W what are her greatest strengths as a player? Well, she is she pockets balls tremendous, and she plays very good under pressure. I was really surprised uh, how well she played. I mean, I just happened to, to beat her. And look at this safety. This is another, another one. Three safes back and yes. forth. Wow. Which is unusual. You really don't see. But see, Lori John is now in a very tough situation. Now, look at the cue ball control here. Yeah. He puts that cue ball right against that stripe ball. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, Lori John has really no but it's still no an option. Open, but it's still an open table. Yes, yes. So she can shoot for any ball. Yes. Or she could play a fourth safety. She can play a safe. I'm not even sure she can hit that seven ball. See, when you're so close to the rail, it's very tough to hit the cue ball into that ball and go to the rail without hit, making a foul. Can't she make that strike ball all the way down? No, she's froze to it, and there's an angle going right into the cushion. This is not easy to do, what she's attempting, because you could easily, what they say, double hit the cue ball, which is cue ball in hand. Watch. See, that's a good hit, but she kind of opened the door a little, a little. I, interesting, the referee took position right yes. over the shot there. Yes, when you have a real close call, a lot of times the referee will stick his nose right over the shot. Still an open table. Oh, and, and he Manalo fired that ball. Finally yes. pockets a ball. Because he tried to break out that 2-14. and 14. Now he got a long, well, watch, watch this. Watch where the cue ball goes. But watch the cue ball. He's trying to break out the two ball, but still doesn't really get a shot. So it's still tied up. It's still tied up. But he's got the six and the four near the two. So he can still probably break these out. Let's see what he does here. He's going to go right immediately. See, what did we say about the trouble? See where the four is? He's going to cut the four in the pocket, and the cue ball will go right into the 14 and open those up. He has a little bit more angle than he would like, but he's still okay. So of all the players you've seen so far in the tournament, right. in terms of their game, their way they're playing the, the table, yeah. not just their shot making, but the way they're playing the table. Yeah, he is. he has impressed me the most, believe it or not, from what I've seen. And he broke those up. He broke them out. Oh, yeah. And Lori John is yeah. thinking wishfully there. She knows that she trails 2-7 to seven in this match. Yeah, if he wins this game, he wins the he wins the match. 
and stays undefeated, which is unbelievable. Now, he's made a nice shot there. Well, the thing is, again, we're going back. I think if, some, if the girls, some of the girls don't have a good break or some of the guys, when you're trying to come from behind, it's very tough because you must run multitude of racks. Right in the heart. Yeah, this, uh, this guy really impresses me. I'll tell you what. It's hard to believe he has not played in tournaments. So do you want to play this guy in the finals? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll say it honestly. Mike the mouth has spoken. I, I don't think anybody wants anything to do with Marlon Manalo right now. I mean, what's he do wrong? He doesn't miss too much. He breaks unbelievable and runs out when he gets a shot. I mean, that's, you know, tough to beat a guy like that. And he looks pretty good here. He's got to play the seven. And get so in other words, eight. he's playing like you. Uh, no, he's not playing that good. Now, let's, let's not go <laughs> overboard here. You know what I've noticed about him as well, watching him through the tournament? And it's true of many players, but perhaps more so with Manalo. No fear of scratching. I mean, earlier when he tried to break up that two ball, which you right. mentioned, Mike, I mean... 99% of the world scratches on that shot, and here he goes again. For the match. This guy is looking unbeatable. Marlon Manalo continues to be marvelous, his 12th straight match in the tournament. Marlon looks very strong, no question. You know, it's interesting. I was speaking with Nick Varner earlier, and he said that Marlon was playing like God. Yeah, I thought he was referring to George Burns there. Okay, up next at the International Pool Tour, Johnny Archer faces the Hall of Famers. The Scorpion also trying to get closer to the top of the hill, and the winner's share of over a million dollars in prize money. He's not getting my share. We'll see. Stay tuned for more International Pool Tour action right after this. You're watching the International Pool Tour. For a schedule of events and to learn how you can qualify to play for over $8 million in prize money, log on to internationalpooltour.com. Johnny the Scorpion Archer, one of Poole's true masters, has begun to find his stroke in the Hall of Fame round. After beating Hall of Famer Ed Kelly, Archer faced the striking Viking Eva Lawrence, only the sixth woman in history to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Archer, after taking Karen Kord lightly earlier in the tournament, keeps the heat on the Hall of Famer and breaks his way to an 8-4 win. Now Archer faces another Hall of Famer, trick shot legend Mike Massey, who's 1-1 one one in the round. Archer has moved to a 7-3 lead in the race to 8, but Massey can come back. You know Massey very well, Mike. Oh, yeah, very well. He's, uh, he's very, very capable of winning this match. Mike Massey's got the break here. Oh, oh and he scratched. He got kicked in. That was oh, a little wow. unlucky. And look, he made like three balls. Yeah. <laughs> as big as Mike Massey is, you'd think he'd have the you best got, break. By the way, the guy's huge. Now watch. No, he goes right in. Yeah, he went right in the side. But, you know, because of the trick shots, I mean, he's a master of trick shots. Right. He has an incredibly powerful stroke, wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah, he definitely does, yeah. Definitely does. You would think he have a great break, too, because of how big he is, you know, but really it's not how big you are. Well, you know, he, we just won the last game, so we had the break, and he's thinking, you know, I can break and run three or four. Yes. Well, the men players are always a threat like that. And then when you scratch, doesn't that just, like, take yeah, the wind the out of yourself? It's the kiss of death, but it happens. You now, know, Johnny with ball in hand. But he has problems. Archer has to break balls out. He's probably going to go into the eight and six. I think the three goes, but he's got to try and break out the uh, – he's going to try and hit the eight ball here. Hit the top of the eight. That's what I would do. Instead of just going into him, we got a good view of this. Watch. He should just hit the eight ball. Well, he didn't – no, I didn't like what he did there. And see, now <laughs> – I mean, I'm looking at this, just taking it for granted. That's how you're supposed to do it. And, and look where he is already. He's on top of balls. I mean, he's, you know, the one's down there. Well, but... there's some lint there. That's a problem as well. Oh, there. lint. He's yeah, peaking but... lint. <laughs> he naturally had a, I mean, now look, this, look is, at a, this. this is a that tough is so shot. Tough shooting over a ball like that. But it's tough now. He's not going to make it. Mm, no. Ah. Slow cloth. That might have gone on a. But again, uh, see, big pockets, big pockets and fast cloth, that ball goes yes. in. But here's the other thing. These are things I take for granted, okay? And Johnny Archer should have hit the eight ball. He would have never had a problem. Instead, he went into both balls, and look what happened. This is the things that I just see, you know. Now, Mike and, Massey's got to win this game because he's, he's got to win the next, what, six games in a row, uh, five games in a yeah, row Yeah, he's got to win. But unfortunately, the pockets are blocked. You see the one ball up there? He's got a couple balls that are actually close to that pocket, so he's got a problem there. He's got another problem down here. So it's not auto automatic. This is a very tough rack to run out. Well, Mike, again, is one and one so far today, and 
Johnny is 2-0. Oh. So Mike just, Massey, the 2005 inductee into the Hall of Fame and, and one of the most recognizable faces in the tournament. You know, Mike once had known that he's more than just a trick shot artist, even though he's uh, likely the best trick shot artist or the most well-known in the world. He came here to win this thing. Yeah. He, and, he can, well, oh. he's got some problems now here too. And you know, cause he travels on the road, Matt doing trick shots. He doesn't have a chance to practice that that much. His wife was telling me that he really doesn't practice as much as he as he could and should, but because of his travel schedule. And the big question is now he's starting to practice because of the IPT tour, and everyone wants to know just how good he can really get <sighs> playing pool and not just doing trick shots. Yeah. I mean, he's a masterful player. <clears throat> Tambo. Now here's the key shot right here. He's got to play the ten. Oh, he's going to play the 10 into the 6. Oh, this is tough on this. So table. he has to make the 6 and the 10. Yes, but I, to be honest with you, I don't think it's possible. This is a very tough shot. The pockets are so small. Wow. Oh! What, what an unbelievable shot well, that Well, I'll tell you was. what. Now, stop me if I'm wrong. Yeah. His trick shot expertise helped him there. Yes, yes, exactly right. I mean, look at this look shot. Look at this. He hit this so well, it's hard to believe. But he's got, he didn't control the cue ball that well. Look where he is. See, that was... Uh, He's in tough. He's tougher now than he was with that shot. He made he made a great shot, but now he's got another tough shot. You know, it's it's almost as though Mike wow. Massey, with his trick shot background, is, is leaving himself difficult shots yeah. because that's what he's used to doing. Well, I don't think he likes that so much, but <laughs> we'll see what happens here. Now, this is he's <laughs> got to go back and forth. Very tough. Look oh, at this shot. Oh, oh my no. goodness. It, now that's a little unlucky yeah. there. I mean, he yeah. made he just made literally three, four trick shots in a row, and and scratches. That's that's Look a at little this hard cut. luck. Yeah, that's that's hard luck there. That's a very tough shot. Right in right in the heart. Yeah, sit, I mean, sit sit. Uh, Throw on the brakes. No, that was a. Uh, I'll tell you, he made three trick. Well, he's Mike Massey. He's supposed to make the trick shots. <laughs> yeah, ball in hand for Johnny Archer, who again, I couldn't put in reverse. Yeah, see. needs to win only this game. Well, that's the way he should have shot it. Well, it looks pretty good for Johnny at this point to clean it up. Yes, but see, Mike Massey made an interesting point. He goes, I should have put reverse on it, which would have kept the cue ball above the side pocket. But he goes, that was tougher. But the key there is always shoot a shot for what it's worth. See what I mean? What good is making that shot when he scratches? If he hits it with the inside English and makes it, he gets a shot on the eight and doesn't scratch. That's stuff that people will learn with experience. But uh, Johnny Archer looks pretty good here. Perfect cue ball control to get perfect position on the eight. And, and picking really, and yeah. actually picking some stuff off the... <laughs> and another an one. Unbelievable And another picker. one. Look He's at this picking guy. stuff off the table that isn't even in play. <laughs> And Ooh, Johnny whoa. Archer wins his third straight match of the day, beating the Hall of Famers. When we return, Mika Eminen and Corey Duell, two young players trying to climb the hill to face this man, Mike Siegel. Hi, my name is Corey Duell. Well, the best part about me and me is doing something that I love for a living and uh, hanging out with my friends and meeting nice people, nice girls. I'm not real, I'm not real money hungry. If I win a lot of money on the IPT tour, I would really like to open my own pool room. I don't need a whole lot to uh, make me happy. Look at what I do. I go, I play pool for a living. I play golf every day. I mean, life can't get any better than it is right now and I don't have hardly any money. Corey Duell has advanced to round three at the International Pool Tour, and he faces his nemesis, Mika the Iceman Eminem. Corey is 2-1 and one on the day, and Mika continues his superlative play, beating three Hall of Famers in a row, Buddy Hall, Ray Martin, and Robin Dodson. This is game one of this big matchup, so important for Corey in particular is getting off to a strong start, guys. Hard. Animated break by the Iceman. Hard break, and we have problems in this wreck. It's some pretty solid. 
You see the one, the corner ball went all the way around the table on the top right screen and went all the way around the table and went in. That's that's when a guy really hits him hard and could have made the eight ball. The eight ball's rolling. Yeah, if the, the eight right. ball goes in on the break, you win the you win the game. Yes, which as you know has not gone in a lot. Breaks those balls up. He still has problems at the. Uh, no, he's got more problems now. You see a thirteen and six. Uh oh. You know what he tried to do there, He right? tried to break those up, right? Yes, So exactly he tried to right. draw the cue ball back and break up those two balls. Yes. Now, this is a powerful stroke. Yes. Look at that, right in the Ooh. side. I don't think I would have done that. I'm just trying to get smart with me. You don't like the combo? Is he talking about Corey Duell there? We have a little bad blood uh, brewing. Something was happening there. There were a few things said. Well, he's talking to his corner man. Now what is, oh, he played a safety. That was a great shot there. You see what he did there? He made uh, he made Mika's stripe ball, hung the five, and tied up the cue ball where he can't hit a stripe ball. See, that was that was a big shot right there. It was a little over our heads. Now, do you think that was a smart shot? A very smart, very smart, because Mika's only got one or two balls on the table left where – um, if Corey gets a shot, more than likely he can break the situation out and probably win the game. So he has to hit his ball. He has to hit it. Made which a nice he does, shot. And, yes. and after you make contact, either the cue ball or the object ball must hit a rail right. for it to be a legal shot, which it did. I still like Corey Duell's chances from this position because Mika only has two balls and one of them's tied up. Corey Duell has time to do whatever he wants. He's got a lot of options with a lot of balls on the table. Well, this is a huge match for Corey. Oh, yep. see, you know what he tried to do there? He tried to put the cue ball in the same spot. He didn't execute that very no, well. No, so at he was all. trying to. Watch what he does. He's trying to hit it low and the cue ball come back up, but he didn't do it. He didn't put English on the ball. See, he said idiot. <laughs> but he's still in pretty good shape. He actually, Mika Inaman might be able to bank this ball cross side now. And get a get a chance to run out. He has to shoot at it now. Has to. Goes or not. There you go. Does it go? Does it go? Oh, oh my nice goodness. Shot. Boy, I'll tell you what, Corey Duell could be kicking himself. Look he makes at this. a great Look shot. Look at this shot. And gets position on yeah. the next ball. Perfect. Yeah, Corey Duell made a big mental and error. Look at there. the cue ball. Perfect position. Perfect position for the other strike yes. ball. Yes. No, yeah, that was uh of course, it's not, this is not perfect. He's kind of straight in. He's very close. Let's see if he can, hey, he had a little bit of angle there. Let's see what happens. This is a lot of green here. This doesn't have to go in. I think the five actually may be blocking the pocket. He might have to play this off the cushion into the five. You see what I mean? I don't think the eight goes cleanly. He's going to hit the eight into the rail and bounce. This is a very tough shot. Bounce it off the cushion and kiss off the five, the orange ball, and go in the pocket. This is not automatic. Again, the layman looks at that and doesn't even think it's possible. Ah. Wow. See, that was not automatic. A lot of balls left on the table, but an opportunity now for Corey Duell after the Iceman misses the eight ball. Well, that's the great thing about eight ball as opposed to nine ball, because now... Corey has to make all of his balls. Yes. See, if this was nine ball, boom, you just hit the nine ball in because the opponent missed and right. you win the game. Well, his only problem is that six ball, the green ball, because it doesn't go in the pocket where the eight is, but I think he would try and take care of that maybe now, draw this back, try and get in between the six and eight is my guess. Oh, he hit oh. the six. I don't like that. See, now here's a... This is what see, I'm – no, 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 see, uh, right off the bat, I don't like that shot. He puts the cue ball in a tough spot, ties up those two balls, and is gambling with getting a is shot. Is that just lack of experience, Yes, Mike? of course it is. Of course it is. In nine ball, that won't show up. This is what I'm saying. But that's I mean, something you would never even think no, about doing. I, 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 you couldn't put a gun to my head to shoot well, that shot. Well, but he certainly didn't leave it there by design, Mike, did he? Well, he shouldn't have gambled on hitting that ball. Anything could have happened. He was lucky that it turned out okay. But that was a poor um, judgment call on his part. It didn't show up this game because, you see, he made it. Well, he had to come with a tough shot. He gets under pressure playing for $200,000, and he's got to make that shot froze on the rail with a small pocket. Don't worry, it'll probably hit anywhere. 
you know. But he got away with it here, and he's running out. This is the first game of their match. First player to win eight games wins the match. And recall, Mika Eminen had Corey Duell all but put away and couldn't finish the eight ball on a difficult shot, granted. Yeah, that was a tough kiss shot. This gives Corey the break and the first game of their match. So Corey Duell with the opening game in his pocket, and we'll get back to this important match. However, coming up next, the magician Efren Reyes in a big eight ball challenge against a fellow Hall of Famer. The International Pool Tour is brought to you by NaturalCures.com. It's your alternative to drugs and surgery. Efren Reyes, the magician, a Hall of Famer and one of the most accomplished players in pool history, had a surprisingly tough time thus far in the round. He's 1-2 and two and must win here against fellow Hall of Famer Buddy the Rifleman Hall, holder of over 70 U.S. titles. Hall is 2-1 and one going into this match against Reyes. Before we go to Game 8, however, we sent a camera crew down to the Philippines where Efren rules, at least in pool. Here's what he had to say in his native language. Nung bata pa ako. Marami na kasi naglalaban kahit siya lugar, kahit mga probinsya, meron mga nagbibilyar. Meron mga nagpupisan, meron mga naghanap buhay para kumita. Kasi kaya napilitan din ako maglaro. Tapos pinanunod ko sila. Lahat na magaling o itama bola, pinanunod ko kung paano mga tira. Hanggang pinapractice ko yun. Araw-araw. Kahit na yung mga hindi marunong, pag may nakikita kong ibang tira, pinapractice ko rin. So meron din ako na, nakikita sa mga hindi marunong. Sa marunong naman, mga scientists lang na tira yun. Mga simple tira. E eh, sa mga hindi marunong, puro invisible. Sa mga posisyon ng bola, na pwedeng gawin mangyari yun. Si Mike Sigel, no, araw, magaling ang bola yung mali niya. Tsaka medyo marami siyang, ano, yung, kahit na ninenerbi siya nung araw, kaya ang kaya niya eh. Kaya ang kaya niya ang dalim, maski nanginginig niya kamay. Well, Mike the Mount Siegel, you understood every word Efren was saying there, right? No, of course I understood it, everything. But there. pool is enormous there, as we just saw. Yes, Efren over there is like Tiger Woods in this country. Very famous. Efren up 7 nothing with the break. I'll see if he makes a ball here. He doesn't have the best break in the world. Obviously, it's good. Now, those he hit pretty well. You know, Ephraim, I think what he does, a lot of times he hits them as hard as he can, and a lot of times he kind of babies them. I think what's going on, see, so he makes a ball on the side immediately. I think what's going on in his mind is he thinks he can run the table when the balls are kind of tied up. So if he breaks them easy and the balls are tied up, he feels he can run out where he thinks the opponent can't. So in his mind, that may be an advantage to him. Now let's see if there's some balls tied up here. I think, uh, obviously, yeah, the three. Yeah, he's got those two balls right there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, I'm surprised he shot that so fast. What's he doing here? Boy, and, you know, Buddy Hall, with his Hall of Fame credentials in check, one of the best ever. Ooh, what happens? He's going for the five ball. Buddy Hall has to catch more than just a couple of breaks here. He's down 7 nothing in this match. But, you know, with when you win, you keep the break. A guy of Buddy Hall's capabilities, or any of these players at this point, can break and run four, five, six racks in a row. Right? Yeah, look how nice Ephraim did this. I mean, it looked like nothing. He shoots the seven, comes around the table, cuts the five in, breaks the three out. Okay. I mean, you know, that was <laughs> extremely tough. And he made it look like it was nothing. You know, if you're watching and you want to come to these events or play in these events, they are open to every player in the world, man or woman. Go to internationalpooltour.com for the entire tournament schedule, to be a spectator, TV schedule, to watch the matches, or to play in these tournaments for the millions of dollars. Well, he's got a, I don't know if he's got enough angle on this or not. Uh-oh. No, I didn't like that shot. His first problem. <laughs> uh, and that's a big problem. He's laughing. He, he actually just kind of made a careless mistake there, I believe. He wanted to follow it all the way to the rail and actually play the eight in the pocket Ooh, you can't what is he see. doing here? Did he just call it up here? Yeah, that's a very tough shot. Very tough shot. 
So he's trying to bank this ball. Yeah, but this is, he's a big underdog in this position, but who knows what's going to – it looks like it's going in. I mean, how did he hit it? Thank you very much. Oh, my God. <laughs> the magician, indeed. He That's connected the rings, he poured the milk into the newspaper, and he sawed the woman in half. Efren Reyes weaves his magic in the match and goes 2-2 two and two on the day, still alive in the tournament. When we come back, we'll go to the table where Corey Duell and Mika Eminen battle it out for the right to move on to the next round. It's the International Pool Tour. Real pool, real rules, real money. Real pressure. Back at the tables after winning the first game of his match against the Iceman from Finland, Mika Eminen, Corey Duell has staggered and trails seven to three. This is a very big match for Corey Duell. He'll have to stage a terrific comeback here if he has any chance of moving on to the next round. And Mika with the break. Whoa. Does he make a ball? Does he make a ball? Yep. Now Corey's just sitting. What do you think of this break, Mike? He hits these extremely hard because, like, the last thing moving goes in. I mean, look how much the – on a faster cloth, ball, guys make balls on the break a lot more because the balls seem to not stop rolling. But on a slower cloth, I'll tell you, it's not easy to make a ball on the break. Well, this is a huge match for Corey because if he doesn't win this match, there's an excellent chance he's out of the tournament. And as one of the best up-and-coming young players in the world – that would be a huge disappointment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too bad. But, you know, the competition's getting tougher and tougher. It's getting near the end. You got the Hall of Famers in there. I mean, there's, you know, and again, we have talked about, even though he's a great player, young player, those mistakes start building up. And we've seen plenty of mistakes in, in this tournament. And they catch up to you. They catch up to you. And the 10 hours a day are on your feet. <laughs> That's another thing, too. Now, Mika's made a great shot here. He's, watch, he comes off the rail, and he's trying to go in between the seven and the three, the two kind of red maroon balls. Look, he hits it absolutely perfect for the striped ball. It doesn't hit another ball. Doesn't hit another ball. So he's he, maybe he listened to the match. I don't know what happened there, but, you know. And again, Corey's fate is in Mika's hands at this point if he doesn't get back onto the table. With his corner man. You know, in the IPT, every player has a corner man uh, that they can talk to, get advice in between the rounds or while they're sitting. But I don't uh, think the corner man's going to help him much. He made another great shot. This guy's full of great shots all of a sudden. Now, see, he gets perfect. He came two rails around the table, which is the way I like to play a lot of shots. He's going to play the blue stripe ball on the side, and the cue ball has the angle to go up table where the eight and those other two stripe balls are. Now, will he hit it hard enough so the cue ball goes into the rail? Uh, I'm not sure. He may just stun the ball, mean slide straight up. That's exactly the way I would have played it. And when you stun the ball, the cue ball drifts up. If he had followed it, he would have gone to the rail, but he might have flirted with the orange ball. That's why he didn't do it. Now, I think he's going to play the green stripe ball drawback. He's got the nine. I mean, he looks in pretty good shape, but, you know, anything can happen. He's a good player. I don't know a lot about him. I've seen him uh, here and there at some of the events. Well, he's 3-0 and today. This will make him 4-0 and and guaranteeing him to move on into the next round. He is a couple of shots away. From eliminating Corey Duell, up seven to three in the match. Uh, I think he likes it from this position. Pretty academic from here. Corey's going to be so disappointed. Although he's played spectacular pool. Great, 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 great. What an impressive win for Mika Eminen, who advances to round four, and what a heartbreak for Corey Duell, who will not make it through, but a very good showing for the young gun. Only six players have moved on to the next round. Hall of Famer Nick Varner, with his stunning win over Nick Vandenberg, ended up 4-1 and one on the day. Marlon Manalo remains unbeaten in the tournament. Fellow Filipino Francisco Bustamante moves on, as does Johnny the Scorpion Archer, who finally seems to be back in stroke, which does not bode well for his opponents. Efren Reyes, with his big win over Buddy Hall, goes 3-2 and two in the round. Two other players have the same one lost record, but the magician appears in the next round by virtue of his low GLI, the game's lost index. A historic day and a round of pool to remember, and only six players remain standing.